In this video, we are going to talk about the Z1 Designer, and specifically the widget tool and the warning tool. So the warning tool is used for placing things on your dashboard when certain events happen. So this could be like the pit limiter, or it could be like an oil temperature warning, things like that. The uh, widget tool allows you to place items on the dashboard which really don't fall into any other category. You know, they're not a data channel, they're not a shift light, they're not a geometric shape. Um, so all those put under the widget tool. So um, stick around, watch the video, find out how these work, and um, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. So uh, let's get started and we will talk about the widget tool first. So here we are in the Z1 Designer. I've got a blank dashboard uh, up here and we're going to look at the widget tool. So uh, I want to put the widget tool uh, options in the foreground. So I'm going to make sure that is selected down here. And then this is the widget tool icon. You click on that to select it. And now when I draw something, I'm placing widget in this case in the foreground. And you do want to place it in the foreground because it's going to change uh, during the uh, um, on the dashboard as you drive around. So if it's in the background, yeah, it won't change. So make sure you have the foreground selected before you place your widget. So I'm going to click and drag to where I want it to be, just right here. And you see here it shows up, it says widget. And then on the properties window, I can choose what I want to show up. So I can have total lapse or the lap number or any of these options, which we will go through and discuss what they all do. Uh, so you have the standard options down here of the, the font, the size, how you want to align it and things like that, and what color you want it to be. Uh, we've gone over these in other videos, so we're not going to go into too much depth on them in this one. We really want to talk about just what the options for the widgets are. So uh, let's talk about that. We've got um, them split up into groups. So the first set is about um, the lap numbers and positioning. So if you choose your lap number, this just shows you whatever lap you're currently on. Or you can do the total laps. So this is how many laps you have to run in a race or how many you've done in a practice session, uh, things like that. Or you can have both together. So in this case, um, lap number and total lap, so 10 of 25. And then whatever position you're in, in uh, the current event, whether it's a qualifying session or a race session or just in practice. Uh, next, we have delta time and delta type. So this is just a delta based on your best lap for the session. And then the delta type shows you um, which um, for option within the Z1 dashboard is being used to calculate your delta. So this can be the Z1 delta, or it could be an iRacing delta, or an Assetto Corsa. Depending on what the user has selected, um, this display shows them what um, is currently in use. So now we have a bunch of uh, lap timing uh, widgets. So we can do our current lap time. We can do our last lap time, our best lap time, or the average lap time. And then you can also have uh, the last lap as average speed uh, in miles per hour or kilometers per hour based on what the user in the dashboard has selected. So uh, these five here give you your various lap timing options. Uh, next up is timing. So there's uh, three timing options. The sim time, so this is what time it is in the simulator, regardless of what time it is in real life. Or you can have the PC time, which is the time it is in real life. Uh, you might want that if you have you know, an alert or something like that you need to do. And then the time remaining in the session or the race or whatever it is um, that you're doing timing wise in the, uh, in the simulator. Uh, next uh, on the widget list is several for fuel usage. So you can get here your average fuel per lap. Uh, and again, all these units will be in whatever the user of the dashboard has selected. Uh, the fuel used in the last lap or your laps of fuel left. And that obviously is based on your current fuel consumption. Um, but the user of the dashboard can change um, what they want to define as their fuel consumption. They can specify a specific number or a certain number of laps, things like that. So um, this option will display based on what the user has chosen. And that's true of all these widgets. Um, the display uh, can be modified by the uh, dashboard settings. Then your fuel mileage, um, this will be something in miles per gallon or uh, liters per 100 kilometers and then how much fuel you need to finish 
um, the session or the race or whatever you happen to be in um, in the uh, in your simulator at that time. Uh, next up on widgets is the temperature. So you have the air temperature, the temperature of the track, just the average around the track, and then the temperature at the start finish line. So these uh, temperature options may not be supported by all sims. So if you select one uh, and you see it's showing uh, zero in your uh, dashboard when you're in the sim, that's because the sim you're in doesn't uh, support temperature information. Uh, next is uh, distance around the track. So you can have the percentage of the track uh, that you go around, which is zero to 100 percent, depending on where you are on the track. Um, the distance, how far around are you? You know, um, and this could be meters or feet or miles or kilometers, depending on user uh, options. And then how long is the track? Uh, again, that could be in um, miles or kilometers based on the user's preferences. And then the final one is the pit lane speed limit. So this will be uh, whatever the pit lane is, uh, speed limit is for the current track. And again, this is um, sim dependent. Not all sims will report the pit lane speed limit. So if you've selected this and you see that you don't have any information, it's because the sim rim does not provide the pit lane speed limit. So you can add as many of these widgets as you want to your dash. Uh, it's very simple. You just drag out like any other tool and select what you want the widget to be. Uh, and it's a great way to get information for your dash that may not be available in other tools. Okay, now let's talk about the warning uh, tool. So first I'm just going to get rid of this widget. So the point of the warning tool is to allow you to display things conditionally. So let's say I have a very basic dashboard that we, we will create. Um, I'm going to put in a background, uh, I'm sorry, a, a rectangle, and I'm going to fill this with, um, let's say, a red color. And I don't want to stroke it. So now let's say I have um, a... Um, a data channel and I'm going to put the data channel on top of that and I'm going to make this my oil temperature. So just select oil temperature and I'll make it much bigger so I can see it. So um, 45. And now let's say I have, um, just to make it a bit more interesting, on this side we will put the gear and we'll just give it a big font size. So a really, really basic uh, dashboard, just the gear and the oil temperature. Now, if I place uh, a warning um, tool, so I select the warning tool, which is the exclamation, I can basically click anywhere, it doesn't really matter. It just places it, and you see down here, I have my warning. Now, I have to choose when uh, this, should show, this should come on. So I'm gonna choose the oil temperature warning. So that means that this warning to, um, display will show up when the oil temperature reaches whatever the user in the dashboard has specified as being too high. So what do I want to happen at that point? Well, what I want to happen is this rectangle, I want to have it show up. So I'm going to drag this rectangle and place it in the warning tool. And I want my data channel to be above it. So uh, actually, it's not, I actually put it in by accident. I want it to be above the warning tool. So. I can turn off my warning tool and this is what my dashboard will look like just in general. I have my gear on the right and my oil temperature on the left. If the oil temperature exceeds a certain level, this is what it will look like. This warning will come on and will display like this with a big red square around my, um, my oil temperature. Or you can have it display anything else you want. Uh, so. So the warning tool can be composed of any of the other options uh, except another warning tool. So what you basically do is you create what you want it to have. So say we want to add text into this as well. So let's put a text box right here and then we'll have it say hi oil warning. So now in my foreground you see I have this text box right here and I want to drag this into my warning. So now my warning is composed of both that text box and the rectangle. And if I turn it off, they both go away. 
Now when my uh, oil uh, temperature hits whatever the predefined value is, then it'll look like this. So this allows you to uh, create various conditional warnings for things that could happen. And you can put uh, anything into it. You can have text fields, you can have data channels, you can have shift lights, um, whatever you want to show up. So if we look at the warning tool, this is what you can have to uh, be included as options. So you can have the ABS being turned completely off, the traction control being turned completely off, or fuel remaining, which means once the fuel gets below a certain level, this warning will show up, or fuel pressure, and this is again once the fuel pressure is below a certain level it shows up, oil pressure, same thing as the fuel, oil temperature and water temperature, if those temperatures are below I mean, or above a certain level, the warning will show up. Or you can have it uh, for pit limiter. So you, if you want a certain display to show off when you engage the pit limiter, you can create that, put those objects in your warning tool and have it set based on the pit limiter. And then the flag option. So if you want a blue flag, a uh, full course yellow or a local yellow, um, you can have warnings for those show up too based on what you want. So maybe you want um, a certain thing when the blue flag happens, you would choose blue flag and create your warning based on that. And you can have as many warnings as you want and you can overlay them because only one most likely will be on at a time. Um, and in the layers down here, you can use the option of turning them off to see what your dashboard looks like with and without them, especially if you have a lot of warnings and you wanna have them only one at a time when you're designing your dashboard. So um, hopefully this has been useful. The Warning tool is a great way to um, add conditional displays to your dashboard. Make sure you use that for things like your pit limiter, your oil temperatures, or blue flags, yellow flags, uh, anything like that that will enhance how your dashboard works. And then the widget tool is a great place to look for all those various displays you want which don't fall under another type of display like a data channel or an object, um, things like that. And in future versions of the designer, there will definitely be more options under the widgets and probably also under the warning tool. So uh, depending on when you're seeing this video, the options available may be more than what we've displayed here. Um, but they all kind of work in the same way. So make sure you check back for future versions and as the designer grows. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you download the Z1 designer and the Z1 dashboard at www.z1dashboard.com.